Good morning, everyone. Today is uh, Sunday, February 21st, and it's uh, 11.51. I'm going to start off with a sound saying. Coming from Isaiah 41.18, and it says, I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and a dry land springs of water. Back is coming from 2 Corinthians 2, 14, and it says, Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Amen. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Amen. Okay, I have some, we're going to try to get to the reading today, which is Proverbs 8. But first I have some key words for you before we begin the reading. Um, prudent. Prudent. Acting with or showing care and thought. For the future, prudent. Um, this is how our leaders should be in any laws that they make. Uh, they should thoroughly uh, examine the law to make sure that the law will benefit the people on earth uh, in the present time and in the future. So, if a law is against the laws of God, then it, it has no benefit for the earth, it has no benefit for the people, and it has no benefit for the future. Okay, anything that is wicked does not benefit us in the future. If, if, if anything, it causes us problems in the future. Okay, so when you're making laws, you have to be careful and mindful that the law you're implementing is a good law indeed. A law that will lift up the people on earth, not bring them down. Okay, so acting or with or showing care and thought for the future. All right. Uh, prudent can also be other words that describe prudent are very simple words. Wise, advisable careful, sensible, uh, far-fetched, cautious. These are the laws that we should be implementing, called laws that are wise and good and sensible for mankind, okay? Um, discretion. Discretion. All right, the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing private information. That is called uh, discretion. And there is no discretion today. Everybody's so quick to, to give give out information that is private. Everybody's so quick to videotape you doing something horribly wrong to destroy your future. Okay, discretion. Uh, and discretion and wisdom hold hands. Discretion and wisdom hold hands. Just like wisdom, knowledge, and understanding also hold hands. Peace and joy and mercy hold hands. All right? Arrogance, which is the problem of our world today. We're too arrogant. Arrogant, having or revealing an exaggerated sense of one's own importance or abilities. A person who is arrogant is like King Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, look what I have built with my own hands. That's arrogance. It takes God out of the picture. It means that God has not done anything to help you get to where you're at. God has not been the giver of all that you have or all that you have been able to obtain. 
And where do, does the glory go? It goes to uh, my producer. Uh, it goes to my fans. It goes to my parents. It goes to um, my trainer. But none of these individuals that I just named give you the opportunities that you are given in life. None of them set you up like that. Only God. But does he get the glory? Absolutely not. That's an arrogant world. Does not consider God in all that they have. It's an arrogant being. An arrogant nation. Okay? And an arrogant nation does not have prudence. Okay. Haughty. Someone who is arrogantly superior and disdainful. You can't tell them nothing. Even though they may be hearing that which is right. They're too arrogant to listen to it. Okay. Conceited. Uh, what's another word for discretion? I'm sorry. Very simple word that is, 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 there's a shortage of it today. Common sense. You see a lot of very intelligent people that have not a drop of common sense. Not a drop. Caution. Also, two simple words that describe discretion. Okay. Uh. Haunting, arrogant, superior, and disdainful. That, that's a snobbish individual. Just snobbish. All right? Conceited, excessively proud of oneself. What's another small word we could use to describe that? Vain. A conceited person is a vain individual. All right? Very opinion, opinionated. Uh, Conceitedly assertive and dogmative in one's opinion. Self-important. Two words to describe. Opinionated. Okay. Moving on down. Overbearing. Arrogance is all with overbearing pride. This is what the gay lifestyle has now. An overbearing sense of pride. A false sense of pride. Okay, and they go around um, boasting of that which is evil. Okay, but that, that evil lifestyle has brought us much shame and curses. All right, mentioned with other evils. So pride, arrogance is, is not a good thing in the sight of God. In the sight of man, all that is wicked is good. It's quite troubling. Okay? But in the sight of God, arrogance is a, is a severe punishment for being arrogant. Alright? Proverbs, we're reading Proverbs 8, so we're going to save that. In Isaiah... 13, 11. This is what God says about arrogance. He says it is to be punished by God. Isaiah 13, 11. To be punished by God. And this is black. And it's also written in uppercase bold letterings. In the colorful Bible. It says, I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their inequities. I will end the heftiness of of the arrogant and the and lay low the pride of the rootless. Okay, it is a rootless thing to make people wait for something that is readily available and desperately needed. It is rootless, mean hearted. Okay. Uh, Colossals 2.16, there's a, something else I wanted to talk about, because every now and then, I, every now and then, I don't do it often, um, 
but every now and then I'll, I'll read my reviews and people will share things, you know, and there are times when I agree, but I don't always agree with everything that someone is sharing, okay, and one of the things that it bothers me so badly is when people tell you what you are not to be doing. It's, it's not written anywhere in the Bible. Okay? But these rudiments are destroying. It makes people come away from God. It doesn't draw them to God. Rudiments are regulations set by men. Okay? And this is how they sound. You are not to be doing this. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't touch this. You shouldn't partake in that. That is rudiments. Okay? It is not biblically sound period okay let me give you some proof colossal 2 16 so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or sabbath no one to judge you at all no one all right, Colossal 2.20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Okay. There are many laws or regulations that the Christian have fed to their people, to the people of God. Okay, but if you don't read your Bible, you don't know what you're being fed. This is why I encourage everyone to read your Bible so that when the servant says something that is that is not right, you can relate this. It's okay to correct a servant if he has said something that is wrong. It is okay if the Lord puts it in your spirit to stand up in church and say it. That is exactly what you should do. Okay? Because he has caused you to see that which is true. Alright? So it says here, Colossal 20, 21. Touch not, taste not, handle not. Alright? Colossal 2, 22. Which are all to perish with the using after the com commandments and doctrines of men. Okay? That comes from man. It doesn't come from God. It does not come from God. You have to remember that my Lord's first miracle was what? Wine. For a wedding. That he was late for. Did he look upon his mother and say, I am a holy man. I cannot make wine. No. He did not. He provided the wine. He used it. Except for at the last supper. He did not partake in it. Okay. Okay. So when someone tells you, a Christian will tell you this. That's why I don't listen to them. They are lost beings. But the world loves them. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Matthew 15, 17. He even breaks it down a little bit more so you can understand it. Okay. Do not ye yet understand that whatever... Entrance in at the mouth goes into the belly and it casts out into the drum. Whatever you put in your mouth, it, whether it's food, it's going to end up in your belly. It's going to come out the right end. If it's drink, it's going to end up in your belly and through your kidneys. And it's going to come out another end. Whatever it is. If you smoke cigarettes, it's going to end up in your lungs and come out through your nostrils. Whatever it is.
So stop it. Matthew 15, 17, I'll read it. Whatever enters at the mouth goes into the belly and it casts out into the drought. And this is black, by the way. I mean, uh, pink. But the next verse is black. Matthew 15, 18, but, and this is all bold letterings. It says, but those things which proceeded out of the mouth cometh from the heart, and they defile the man. So there is nothing you can put to your lips that will defile you. Nothing. Nothing. But there is those things that come out of your mouth. Those are the things that defile a man. All right, let me break it down to you a little bit more. Matthew 15, 19, for out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemy. All of these things is what defiles a man. For him to smoke a cigarette does not defile a man. Or have a glass of wine or a beer does not defile a man. Or wear earrings does not defile a woman. Matthew 15, 20. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defile not a man. Even if you sit down at the table and not wash your hands, that does not defile you. But if you sit at that table and talk blasphemy, that defiles a man. If you sit at the table and forget to thank God for that meal that you're about to partake in, that defiles a man. For you not give God thanks for it. Defile, to make unclean, to render foul or dirty, to make impure, to soil, tarnish, to pollute. Okay, to corrupt, to violate, to render impure with sin. Yes. When you change your sex, you have been defiled. Okay? Corruption of morals, principles, and character. All of that defiles you. Rudiments. What are rudiments? They are what? Regulations set by man, not by God. Someone asked me a question. What about modesty? You can do anything in modesty. But if, it, if what you're doing is not good for you, then you ought to have common sense to not do that which is not good for you. Okay? All right. Um, another thing about giving. The word says that when someone asks of you, you ought to give it. If you have it, most of the time people have it, but choose not to give. It does not, the word does not say that you should ponder over it. That you should consider it? No. It says, if you have it, you are to give. Some people will tell you what they need when they ask you for something. I need gas. I need to eat. It doesn't matter what their needs are. If you have it, you are to give it. Period. Okay? If they say... I need a dollar so I can get me a beer. Okay, you may not drink beer. So what? Your brother or your sister does. And they are short. Give to them. Let God deal with the rest. Let God be concerned about the rest. But you are not to deny someone. Simply because you don't partake in it. 
you are not. That is not biblically sound. Period. Okay, now let's go to. How long do we have time? I'm not going to rush through this, so um, we're going to start it and we may not finish it. I'm only going to do nine more minutes today. Okay, this is the excellency of wisdom is exhorted, the excellency of wisdom is encouraged. Okay. One thing about me, I'm not afraid to be controversial. Because Christ was controversial. No matter what he did, he caused controversy. When he walked into his father's house all on the Sabbath day and they were doing all kinds of business as usual and he started turning tables over, changing all, letting animals and be school. That was controversial. Did he not do it because he was afraid of what the, of, of what the other pastors and priests and Sadducees and Pharisees would think? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So never be afraid to be controversial because the truth can be controversial. All right, let's begin. This is a 36 verse and let's go through half of it. All right, the first, I'm going to read it from, I'm not going to use the rainbow. I'm going to use the international. Okay. Here it says, the excellency of wisdom is encouraged. Here it just says, wisdom calls. Okay. Uh, verse 1 to 3 is read for discipleship. And it says, does not wisdom call out? Does not understand and raise her voice? Yes. Three. Two. On the heights along the way. Where the path meets, she takes her stand. Three. Beside the gates leading into the city, to the entrance, she cries aloud. Four. Two. Um, ten. It's pink for witnessing. To you, O oh men, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. Five. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, gain understanding. Okay, so the simple what, what do they need? They need prudence. All right, the foolish need what? Understanding. Six, listen, for I am worth, I have worthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. Seven, my mouth speaks what is true. For my lips detect. Detest wickedness. Okay. If you love God. You are going to hate that which is evil and wicked. Period. You are not going to go along with the world. You are not going to go along with your kids. If they are doing something that is considered wicked. You will, in, you will let them know that this thing is wicked. You are not going to be a sellout to God for your children. Absolutely not. Because why? I love God more than I love any soul on this earth. Any soul. Any soul. Seven, my mouth speak what is true, for my lips detest wickedness. Eight, all the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. None. Why? Because wisdom is not evil. It is of God. Okay. Continuing. Nine, to, to the discerning, all of them are right. They are faultless to those who have knowledge, faultless. Ten, choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. Okay. 
So what is more worth more than silver and gold? Wisdom. You could fill the White House with bars of gold and it would still not be worth more than wisdom. And now we have leadership that lack wisdom, lack prudence. Supreme Courts that lack wisdom and prudence. And this is why they implement laws that are wicked and evil in nature. And if you think it won't have an impact on this world, yes, it does. Because just because a group of people are silent does not mean that they are not angry. January 6th, they were my angry brothers. And they had a right to be angry. They've been silent for a long time. But I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, there is something ugly brewing in this world. It is brewing. And when it manifests itself, that crowd you saw on January 6th will be small. It will appear small. And if that didn't scare you, because I'm sure it shook the leaders in their shoes and their underwear. Eleven, for wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Nothing, not even riches. All right, twelve, I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. Did not say they hold hands. You can't separate them. In the same way, you can't separate your top lip from your lower lip. It, 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 it's together. It works together. If you take the tongue and cut it, it, it you can't separate the tongue from the mouth. It all works together. So if you try to lead any generation, any, any leaders in any generation try to lead without wisdom and prudence, you are creating a disaster in the makings. Twelve, I wisdom dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. Okay, thirteen, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. All right. Let me repeat that. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance. This is what God hates. Evil behavior and perverse speech. This is what God hates. Okay, 14. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have understanding and power. 15. By me, by wisdom, kings range and rules. Rulers make laws that are just. Did you hear that? Rulers make laws that are just with wisdom and prudence. Without it, they make laws that are evil in nature and cause the nation of people to irk more. 16. By me, princes govern and all nobles who rule on earth, all in every generation. Okay, 17, I love those who love me, and those who seek me, find me, amen. You want wisdom, you ask God for it, and you will receive it abundantly. 18, with me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. 19, my fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield suppresses choice silver. 20. I walk in the way of righteousness along the path of justice. You can never justify that which is wicked and evil. And this is what has happened in this world. The evil have been justified and protected. Be 
That's because you have leaders in Supreme Court some nominees that are evil in nature and operate without wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Without a true concern for the people they govern. Without a God in their heart. 18, 20, 20. I walk in the way of righteousness along the path of justice. 21. Best doing wealth on those who love me and making their treasures full. 22. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. 23. I have appointed, I was appointed from eternity, from the beginning, before the world began. 24. When there was no oceans, I was given birth. When there was no springs abundant with water. 25. Before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. So wisdom and knowledge is just as old as Jesus Christ himself. And we cannot operate without it. Period. We are polluting our world. Literally. Poisoning it. Poisoning our children. Changing the structure of the family. And you think we're going to be blessed by it. 26. Before he made the earth or its field or any of the dust of the world. 27. I was there when he set the heavens in place where he marked out the horizons on the face of the deep. 28. When he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep. 29. When he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command and where he marked out the foundations of the earth. 30. Then I was the craftsman at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence. Amen. 31. Rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. This was back when mankind and the world was first established. It didn't take long. It didn't take long for Eve to do what she did. That's just that goes to show you the simple nature, nature, nature of men. If God said you can't have this, the more you want it. If God said you shouldn't do this, the more you want to do it. 32. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Amen. 33. Listen to my instructions and be wise. Do not ignore it. 34. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorstep. Amen. 35. For who's... Whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from God. That's what we are in desperate need of. Favor from God. But we must do what it takes to get it. We must do that which is painful. And that is to repeal all of the ungodly laws that we have established for the last hundred years. Will that be a painful process? Absolutely. Will it cause an uproar? Absolutely. But that does not mean that we should delay in doing so. Because the favor of God is just that favorable. We need it. We can't operate without it. We can't exist without it. 35, for whosoever finds me finds life and receives favor from God. 36, but whosoever fails to find me harms himself. Didn't I say that? We are just dis creating destruction. And with each passing year, you will see it come to pass, manifest in our world. And one way or the other, we will do God's will. We can do it on our own, 
or he can make us do it. You hear me? We can do it. It's better we do it on our own. It is much better for us. Okay? Because he can tear this country down to nothing but ground. Tear it down. No technology, nothing. Have you living in tents again? Will that do it? Absolutely. But why should God have to get so, so downright dirty with us? Why should he have to go to that degree? Because there is no wisdom in the land. But whosoever fails to find me harms himself. All who hate me love death. And this is why we have buried so many people within the last 12 to 14 months. Please, please, my brothers and sisters, please recognize the awesomeness of God. Please, seek wisdom above all things, about wealth, about fame, above anything it is worthy to have. And we have desperate need of God's favor. Okay? We can't have our way and have his favor also. No. Because some of our ways are terribly evil in nature. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. As always, may the peace of God be upon you and the protection of God surround you. May the will of God for your life, not your own will, for your life. And may the will of God for this earth be manifested. Thank you very much for listening, and I love you, but God loves you more. And always remember that we are still in a pandemic, so be, be wise, wear your mask properly, cover your nose. Don't forget to be kind, compassionate, and prayerful. Thank you for listening. Have a beautiful Sunday.